I'm Jordan with Blue Diamond Pumps. I'm here today in uh, Swanee, Georgia at the Mitsubishi Training Center, and we're gonna show you an install of a Micro Blue on a Mitsubishi Wall Mount M-Series. Um, we are going to install our X85-003. Um, please note before installation, if you're working on MXZ models, uh, please see application notes that are available on my link drive. Today for the install, we'll be using a Micro Blue, uh, part number X85003. Uh, we'll also be using our alarm extension cable, that's uh, part number C13192. Um, contractor or installer will need to source quarter inch ID vinyl tubing and of course wire nuts. And then you'll be using your typical hand tools, your wire cutters, and your um, Phillips head screwdriver. So to get started on installing the pump on a Mitsubishi high wall unit, what we're gonna do is remove this bottom plastic cover. Uh, we've already gone ahead and gotten the uh, veins out of the way. I've already removed these bottom two screws as well. So the next step will be actually unhinging the bottom cover um, to expose the back channel and then also help get our electrical uh, up into the panel where we need it. Now that we've got the cover off the unit, um, you can see that in a real install, um, to fit the micro blue and reservoir behind the unit, it's gonna be an application where you can pipe your copper straight out. If you've got your piper coming across, we have some other install options, uh, whether that's using our fascia kit, which is another product um, that Mitsubishi sells. Uh, part number for that is T18016. Um, you also could you know, leave the reservoir back here and put the pump elsewhere. This particular video, we're gonna show you actually fitting everything right here in the back side of the unit. What we're gonna do first is adapt the uh, reservoir to the drain tube. Um, I've already trimmed this half inch ID coupling down. This coupling is what's provided with the unit. Um, so what we'll do is we will adapt the drain tube with the coupling to the inlet of the reservoir. And what that'll do is that'll give you a starting point um, on where you can kind of put the rest of your setup. To secure the reservoir in place, you can use the pieces of Velcro that are provided with the package. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them here on the bottom of the reservoir, and then we're gonna use that to kind of fix the reservoir down here to the bottom of the unit. And then we'll move on to adapting the pump. Next, we're gonna take our pump. Uh, we wanna fit our pump before we route our electrical and everything, just so we know exactly where we're gonna mount the pump. If for some reason you feel like you don't wanna mount it on the inside of the unit, you don't have the space, that way you don't have to reroute your electrical. Um, mounting it inside the unit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a piece of quarter inch ID tubing. You can tell I've already trimmed that down. Uh, we wanna get it as close to the reservoir as we can just for space um, restraints here inside the unit. Um, what I'm gonna do next is take the piece of quarter inch ID tubing that I've already trimmed down and adapt it to the outlet of the reservoir. Now that we've got the pump into place, we've got the reservoir fit, we've got our adaptations made from the drain tube into the reservoir and from the reservoir into the pump. Uh, both this coupling here, half inch ID supplied with the pump, this quarter inch tubing is gonna be part of what you feel supplied. Uh, we've also taken our quarter inch tubing off the discharge and we've routed it out you know, mocking up a, a real install where you'd take that to your point of discharge. What we do next, after we've got the pump fit where we want it and plumbed accordingly, we're going to look at running our electrical. Um, what we wanna do is use our uh, alarm cable extension, the C13192. We'll connect this. Um, what this is, is a volt-free relay. It's a normally closed set of contacts, so this black wire is common, yellow is normally closed. And I'll show you what we're gonna do with um, those as we move forward. For today's video purposes, we're using kind of a mock-up of the whip that you may be with your uh, Mitsubishi unit. So we're gonna say black is our S1, 
yellow is our S2, and green is gonna be our S3. Um, when you're installing a Blue Diamond pump on the M-Series uh, wall mount, um, we wanna make sure that we're running S1 through the pump. That's how we're gonna utilize our alarm. So utilizing the volt-free relay um, that's equipped with the pump, we're gonna run S1 through the pump out our yellow, which is normally closed. And basically what that's gonna do is in an alarm condition that's gonna open the normally closed set of contacts, it's gonna break S1 coming into your air handler, uh, turn the unit off, keep the pump running to prevent the overflow. All right, so first step with the wiring is gonna be powering the pump. And how we're gonna power the pump is we're gonna run one leg of your voltage through the pump. So your S1, uh, which in this particular uh, installation is gonna be this black wire, we're actually gonna wire nut that to both black wires on my pump. One of the black wires being RL1, which is a power leg, and the other black wire being common from the normally closed switch. So all three of those power wires will be wire nutted together, again, in effort to bring voltage or one leg of voltage through the pump. Once you've brought voltage into the pump, we'll deliver that voltage back to S1 through the yellow coming from my pump, which is normally closed. Now yellow, the normally closed contact on my pump, this should be the only wire that's in, on your S1 terminal at your air handler. Once you've got voltage coming in black and out yellow, the second leg of power is gonna come from your S2 terminal. You're actually gonna have two wires on your S2 terminal. You're gonna have your S2 from your condenser, condenser which in this case is gonna be your yellow wire. You'll also have the white wire, which is how we're going to get the other leg of power for our pump. Lastly, once you've got our normally closed on S1, you've got your black wire, your S1, coming into our um, L1 and our common. Um, so you've got all three of your black wires together. Um, you've got your second leg of power from my pump installed on S2, along with your S2 from your condenser. And you're not gonna do anything with S3. S3 is your communicating wire and we do not need to uh, break that or do anything with that terminal. The last wire will be our ground wire for the pump. And we're gonna simply install that right here. Now that we've got the pump grounded, what we've done is we've run your S1 through my pump. Um, what that's doing is we're gonna, again, we're gonna break power coming from the condenser into the air handler, but that'll keep a constant feed of power to the pump. So when this does turn off, your pump will stay running in effort to prevent the overflow. This black wire here is representing our S1 from the condenser. So we've taken the S1 from the condenser and run it into both black wires on the pump. This particular black wire is the common from the relay, and this particular black wire we call our L1 in the install manual, or you can refer to it as one of your hot legs on the pump. So your S1 into common and L1 on the pump, the voltage is gonna come back out of the normally closed, and we're gonna install that on the S1 terminal of the air handler. This should be the only wire installed on S1 of the air handler. Our second leg of power is gonna come from S2 of the air handler. You'll notice that your S2 from your condenser is also installed on this terminal. So you will have two wires on the S2 terminal. You'll notice S3, we have not interrupted, we have not altered how S3 is installed. S3 will run from your condenser into your air handler. Again, please note, if you're working on an MXZ, please utilize my link drive in the application notes listed.
Now that we've gotten the unit button back up, what we want to do is we want to go back to the back side of the unit. We want to plug in the reservoir and we want to make sure that we have secured all of our hose connections. You'll notice I plugged in the male and female eight pin connections right here. Flat tops go together. There's also two arrows that indicate. These blanking plugs came off of the outlets on the side of the reservoir. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put these back on top. We also want to make sure that our vent tubing is installed and it can just be snaked up higher than the drain pan. We just want to make sure it's free of any obstructions and you can cut that to the appropriate length. Lastly, we just want to make sure we go back and we have hose clamps on these connections. Didn't do that on the initial install because we want to make sure everything is fit in the right location. We're not going to have to do any more cutting and trimming. But now that we know everything fits, we've got the electrical installed, we've got the reservoir plugged in, we know the pump works, we test it, make sure that we have um, hose camp connections, specifically right here on the suction side of the pump. Because we are creating vacuum, we want to make sure that these connections are airtight and of course watertight. That's a complete install of a Micro Blue on a Mitsubishi High Wall M Series. Um, again, uh, please note if we're working on MXZ, we need to refer to the application notes that are available on my link drive. If you need any further assistance with technical support, please call Mitsubishi at 1 800 433 4822. I'm Jordan Wingard with Blue Diamond Pumps. Thanks for watching.